I guess in computer games, we are constantly iterating on concepts that help us to uh, get our players into flow, that help us to uh, motivate them to, um, to play the next level, to spend another hour with the game. Um, the, the concepts are under constant iteration. I, I don't see anywhere that, that fundamental psychological theses are getting questioned or are being reinvented or new ones are, are bubbling up. I just see that we're refining in the details and that we're optimizing the experience in the games in details really, but I don't see anything disruptive, disruptive coming up in, in gamification that could change or have a really big impact um, in, in, in the business world, for example, by applying those elements. Oh yeah, that's a really big uh, topic. I think, um, I think it requires a, a really good understanding of how people react to things. Um, I mean, if, if you implement motivation schemes, if you implement reward systems, um, you need to be aware of that people potentially start to abuse them. You need to be aware of how, how things react with each other. So just kind of saying like, we need to gamify things and, and here's like a bonus system that we implement and here's a, a, a progression scheme that we probably implement. Um, and we've just seen that in that game, so we might actually export that here. Um, that in itself will not work. The, the, the organization, the whole organization needs to be um, part of the thought process when implementing gamification. And you need to think well through what is the consequences of if I do it here, like how will the employee feel with this new scheme? How will he react to it? And that's a, a very thoughtful process. So I can, so just looking at gamification elements and um, just putting them in there, that's not going to work out at all. Like this is a, this is a process where you need experienced people on board. Don't just try to do it yourself or in a very, very small and closed environment. Um, but if you want to roll it out big scale, then you should really have people on board that have done that before. You can, you can just package other things into the box. I mean, if that is the impact of that certain gamification element, then you probably need to add other things around it. it there's nobody that says, like, this is the one thing, and this is what needs to work. Like, if this works and motivates people for short-term goals, and maybe other goals are not considered because the attention goes all to this one and this gamified element, then you put kind of a bigger scheme on top of that, right? You package it with other stuff. It's not like you can only gamify this one thing. On the other hand, that obviously you don't want to make it too complex. Like people still need to understand what's going on. So yeah, 10 different packages and reward schemes and, and achievements, then nobody's going to understand anymore. So that's the balance, kind of iterate, do the first thing, see what happens. Once again, think it well through. So you try to not make mistakes in the first place, but of course you can make mistakes. So try to make them fast. And if you realize those, package something else with it, right? Um, change it a little, put something else on top. That's what we do with games, it's the same thing. And of course, you want to make sure that you measure the right metrics. Like, what's the things that are actually impacted? Like, if I do this, what's happening? Is revenue increasing here? Is that thing getting sold more? Is, is um, probably our, our costs increasing here or less by having this thing in place? Like, what's the KPI I need to measure to see what the outcome is of that actual process that is being gamified or that mechanic being implemented? So knowing the KPIs, looking at the KPIs, and iterating that product, you will come to a good result. Um, yeah, like the one game that I'm playing right now is called Planet Side 2. That's a massive multiplayer online role playing game uh, where you're fighting battles on a pretty epic scale. So you play with like 600, 700, 800 players at the same time and fight for one kind of fortress. So it's an enormous amount of team play necessary to accomplish your goals. Um, it's like there is literally several platoons, which all consist of 50 players, are broken down in squads that are managed by platoon leaders, squad leaders. Um, it's a huge organization in that is actually coming together ad hoc, which is very exciting. So players form ad hoc from all kinds of different countries. They form into groups that are actually not only one group, it's several 
organizational groups that all form ad hoc and have to accomplish a target together. It's extremely challenging if you think about it from a company perspective. By working, you just put a bunch of people together and they have to accomplish a goal that have never worked before. Different countries, different cultures. That's happening in this game. Besides the fact that it's fun because it's a shooter game, but it, like the, the, the level of organization in there, the level of discipline from people, the, the willingness to work with and to, to fight and to, to play with somebody from all around, form a bond with him for a couple of hours or maybe a couple of days, that's amazing. It's like really inspiring actually. There's a lot of different skills I think that, that, um, that you gain by playing computer games. And obviously there's different kind of computer games. You don't necessarily gain that much by playing Tetris all day. Like obviously there's some kind of uh, hand-eye coordination, but that's a skill that you probably won't adopt much in your working life. But more sophisticated games, um, uh, and World of Warcraft is a name that everybody knows out there, even a non-gamer, but that is a game that will certainly help you to um, play with random people together, form cooperation and, and, and kind of working groups with other people from all around the world on a smaller scale than Planet Side 2 that I just mentioned. But uh, still, there's kind of a couple of people coming together. They form working groups. They achieve targets together. Uh, there's people that lay out plans. And there's different characteristics that players develop in those games. Some are um, focusing on social elements. Um, some are exploring the world. And you can see that these people are like the people that want to find out everything. And uh, some people are uh, kind of abusing the game. They try to find things that don't work in the game. They try to find these little things that don't work and abuse them and kind of cheat on the game. And you, you find these characteristics. So um, I guess people are able to train their skill sets in games, depending on what kind of what kind of distinguished uh, characters they have by themselves. But on the other hand, if you look at the gamers, you can actually see, if you look closely what games they play and how they play the games and what kind of gameplay behavior they're showing, then you will actually be able to see what kind of position is potentially a good position for him in the company or what kind of skill set does he have that I didn't discover so far. Well, my, I'm not sure if my answer is a good one, but I'm not, I'm not so sure if that is not a waste of time and that is not discrediting any of the target groups. It's just like, let the people do what they're most effective in and let the people do what they enjoy doing most. And it's just not that enjoyable for a person that didn't grow up with digital technology to adopt to using a smartphone every day. Like that's a real old fashioned thing I'm talking right now, but I mean, everybody's really using a smartphone, but like, if somebody, if there's a, a disruptive change in technology and people have not been part of that disruption, they've been a, a, an older generation that has not kind of um, had been using these technologies when they grew up or, or for a long time, I'm not sure if the best way is to try to convince them to use it um, with all the challenges that might pose, right? I mean, that might be two levels in a, in a company, but the most important thing I think is like, people need to feel well in what they work with. And somebody doesn't feel well with working with this, yeah, you can explain him. If he still doesn't feel well, like, no way he should work with that. Like, whatever the consequence of that is. But I, I don't think it's necessarily a good idea to kind of push somebody to use something that's not just useful for him. If anything, we just should try to remove barriers for somebody. And if that means somebody's not using that certain piece of technology, that might be the solution.